Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Let me begin with the scripture that they used in that song. Psalm 126, verse 5. New King James Version. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Glory to Jesus. And so with this scripture, it's clear that sowing, and when I say sowing, yes, it includes finances, money, but it's not exclusive to money. Sowing is basically giving. So anything you give is a seed. Your time is a seed. Your money is a seed. Yourself is a seed. Your talents, your gifts, they are all seeds. And so it's clear from the scripture that there is a time to sow in tears. That sowing doesn't necessarily always come with, um, with a smile or with excitement. Am I speaking to someone here? If you have actually um, walked with God and responded to God and yielded yourself to God, there will be time God will make demands on you that are not convenient. Is somebody here with me? Am I speaking to the right audience, yes, or should I go to the first church of the um, <laughs> the first church of the Revelation? <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Am I speaking to the right audience? Yes, okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. I'm talking about sowing in tears. Okay, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> uh, praise the name of Jesus. You need this message. You need this message. Every message that is coming in this season is timely and is very relevant and reality. So you open your heart, you receive instructions. And the messages are actually instructions. Um, instruction means they are like God sitting you down and telling you what to do. Telling you what to do for yourself. Right? It's a, it's a year of 10 times more. So you are getting instructions on manifesting 10 times more. Now, I don't have to put it that way, that this is how to, no. If you are smart and sensitive and spiritually intelligent, you know that any message that is coming in this season, right from the end of December into January till now and hereafter, are instructions. So let's get back to it. And so there is a time to sow in tears. There's a time to plant um, without much funfair. There's a time if you are walking with God that God will make certain demands on you that will not be convenient. That's on one hand. And when God makes demands on you that are not convenient, it's a blessing. Because God won't make that demand on everyone. Are you with me? Yes, God won't make that demand on e everyone. Now, I, I was thinking about this and I was saying to myself, you know, man and God are alike in a lot more way than we understand. Yeah. Man and God are alike in a whole lot more way than we understand. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. 
as an individual, there are certain people in church as a pastor I can make certain demands on. But I can't make that demand on everyone. And you know that the level of demand I can make on someone indirectly is the level of access they also have to me. They may not be aware. And I've also come to see that some people are not even aware. If I make demand, for instance, on Pastor Nusa, and say, Pastor Nusa, be in my house for 6 a.m. There are certain things I need you to help me do. It also tells me, shows conversely that there are some things that Pastor Nusa would request, or even without request, doesn't even need to request. There are some times in his life when he would need me to be there, but he would not expect that I can make myself available for him. And he suddenly see me showing up, and he'll be surprised. Now, at that point in time when I need him to be in my house for 6 a.m., there are other people who might be there, but I can't make that kind of demand on them. But if I can't make that kind of demand on them, it also means that it's possible if they have a situation like that, that I need to push myself beyond certain limits and I have other assignments, I may assign someone to go on my behalf. So I'm still there for them, but not in person. Someone is representing me. So there are different levels and categories. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. And, you know, if you read the scripture so well, it is clear that God is exactly like that. God loves everybody equally, right? But in terms of, um, I want to put it in a way that you, you would understand clearly and not misunderstand what I'm saying. Not everyone, um, there are certain things that not everyone can assess with God. I can give you an example. There are certain things also that, that some people will do. God will turn his eyes. Some others will think of doing not doing it, just think of doing it. They are finished. The angel of the Lord, and these we are not small angels, they were archangels. The ones who visited Abraham. There were three, God himself and two angels. And so obviously those two angels must have been the most senior. Michael most likely would be one of them. So they took um, um, Lot, right? And his family. And they took them out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And they said, don't look back. Don't look at that land. And Lot's wife turned back. And look, she turned into a pillar of salt, right? But in that same chapter, we understand and we see that Abraham looked. And nothing happened to him. So you can go and argue with God. <laughs> You know, there are some activists. But God, why? <laughs> I can give you so many examples. So many examples. Abraham looked. Nothing happened. It could have been, it would have been impossible for Abraham to turn to pillar of salt. It's not possible.
but he looked. But can you make the sacrifice Abraham made? Abraham, take your son, the one you love, not just your son, the one you love, the, the prized possession, the one you waited for for 25 years, and finally God, take him, go and offer him as a bond offering. Abraham said, yes, sir. How many of you here can do it? How many of you here, let me see on up, can do it? You can do it. May God, may God, he didn't say that. Lord, your mercy upon him. For he knoweth not what he said. Because if you are giving 10% of that trial, you will fail. Woefully. 10%. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I mean, you can't, you can't. How do you even know you can do it? Do you have a son? <laughs> you, you. Glory to Jesus. But Abraham did that. So let me get back. So, so if God ever ventures to make demand on you that is not convenient, that is compressing, as it were, whether it's financial or in terms of time or in terms of service, it is because you have found favor with God. And it is because somehow, for some reason, you have Proven yourself before God. And God feels like I can make demand on, on him. I can make demand on her. Because God won't make that kind of demand on everyone. So that is one dimension of sowing in tears. When God makes demand on you. Another dimension of sowing in tears is. God isn't making any demand. But. You are. Offering yourself or offering something to God that cost you something without him demanding for it. That one is even more most pleasurable to God. That one is most delightsome to God. You are making sacrifice that is not demanded from you. You're saying, God, I've come with this. I, I remember a man of God was saying this many years ago. And take note, this happened decades ago. He said he came to God to fellowship with God. And God called him by name. He said, so what did you bring for me today? And he looked. He said, really, I don't have anything. He said, but God, from today, I give you my salary. So every month, he brought his salary and gave it to God. Was it convenient? No. Did he affect him severely? Fast forward years, many years later, he is regarded as the richest pastor presently on earth, and he's a Nigerian. Are you seeing? Did God ask him to lay down his salary? No. Was it comfortable lay down his salary? Huh? So there is a time to sow in tears. Psalm 126 verse 5. I mean, that song was very timely. There is a time to sow in tears. There is a time when you are giving, whatever you are giving, and not just money, including, sometimes it, it, about money is just a fraction of what you can sow in tears.
You can sow your time in tears for God. Say, God, one hour every day, I will not fail. I'm going to intercede for souls, intercede for the church, and intercede for my pastor. And yet you have an extremely tight shadow. Extreme. And God sees and God knows. God knows. You see, there are certain dimension of giving that is not giving. It is called sacrifice. It is called sacrifice. And that's a dimension that anybody in the kingdom, in fact, both the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness, anybody in any of the kingdom who wants to attract the supernatural upon their natural must get to that point to experience or to activate supernatural forces on their behalf. A dimension of giving that is not just giving, it is sacrifice. You know that something is leaving you. You can feel it. Something is leaving you. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Those who sow in tears, that's, that's why you give something that costs you something like David said. He said, I will not give God that which costs me nothing. Ha! Malakatosta. That's a human being. I will not offer. Is it more like far be it from me that I will give to God what will not cost me something. Anything I give him must cost me something. In other words, I'm, it must be something I can feel. It must be something I can feel. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro the earth to show himself strong. So God is watching. I said here some time ago recently that whilst it's true that you know, God has a plan for you. A plan for everyone born of man. The essence to which you fulfill that plan or how far you go in it depends on you, not on God. So God can have, for instance, a plan that you are going to play a vital role in a sector. And maybe his plan in terms of that vital role in that sector could be on a global platform where your voice is heard beyond your nation. But you are not going to start from there. You are going to start from the backside, right? Okay. Now, whether you eventually stand on the global platform or continental platform, or national platform, or state, or local government. What's the other one less than local government? Eh? What? What? Or what platform? It depends on you. Now, you have the potential to stand on the global stage, but you are limited to the world platform. Not because of God, because God already signed you for the global. But you see, um, you have refused to sacrifice convenience and comfort in order to reach your goal. The Bible says, for the joy set out of him, he endured the cross, he despised the shame. You can't go far if you are unwilling to make sacrifices. You can't go far. Can't go far. Sacrifice is the word. Sacrifice is what unlocks the supernatural. Demonic supernatural, divine supernatural. Sacrifice unlocks the supernatural. Sacrifice unleashes 
the supernatural. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. And you have to be comfortable with that word. That word, sacrifice for you, has to mean... Um, you have to change, you have to alter the meaning. You have to alter the meaning and the, the feeling it creates. Some people, when they hear sacrifice, they have a repulsion. And that repulsion is coming from the enemy who has programmed that person for mediocrity. You have to love and embrace the word sacrifice. You have to be excited when you hear the word sacrifice. You have to be comfortable with the word sacrifice. And then you have to yield yourself to that word sacrifice. It's the key that unlocks the supernatural. It's the key that I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not talking about, oh, there, there is a call today and then you just come today and empty your account. Now, that's sacrifice. That's an act of sacrifice. But what I'm talking about is a lifestyle. We have seen people who empty their account today. Tomorrow they begin to murmur. When I was a pastor in House and the Rock, one day I was in the office and then I said somebody, a church member, wants to see the pastor on seat. Okay, and I was the pastor on seat. I said, okay, tell her to come in. She comes in. And um, the pastor, I want to, <laughs> I, I want to collect all my offerings. All the offerings and tithe I've given in this church. I said, why? He said, because I've not seen any harvest. I said, okay, go on. if you bring proofs, maybe we can work on that. Yes, you bring proofs of the offerings, the whatever, maybe we can consider it. He said, no, I don't have, said, sorry, I can't help you. So, so that individual will believe that she had made sacrifice. She never made any sacrifice. She was gambling. She was gambling. She was involved in gambling. And God is not a gambler. God is not a gambler. He's not Kalo Kalo. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. That's not what we are talking about. We are talking about a state of being, a consciousness, a lifestyle. Let me tell you something. If you make this, and I'm talking about a lifestyle, you will never be small in your life. That's the truth. Go and check out from the scripture. Everyone who lived this kind of lifestyle. One of the greatest mark of the seed of greatness in the man is his ability and willingness to make sacrifice. That's one of the greatest marks. One of the greatest marks. I'm not talking about giving. I give my time. I give my time. I give my offering. No, I'm, I'm, that's what, I'm talking about when it leaves you, you can feel it. And you feel it for a while. Kenneth Copeland gave an example one day of a man many years ago when the ministry was just starting. He was asking people to make pledges on a monthly basis, $200. And there was this guy in the congregation and he says to God, God, you know I like to give, but if I give $200, the remaining part of it for my salary, the remaining, uh, um, what is remaining might not even be enough to cover my transportation. So, but the call kept coming. The call kept coming. The call kept coming. And then suddenly, somehow, 
he decided, you know what, I'll do it. And so he made a commitment, $200 every month. And um, he will manage the rest for transportation and trust God to keep him in terms of feeding and all that. He was doing that every month. Every month. Every month. Nobody knew how, how he was living. And then somehow, after a long while, I'm not talking about after a month or after six months, no. Because you'll be tested. Whether you are like that woman that came to collect. <laughs> yes. Whether after some few months you come back and say, Pastor, <laughs> that sacrifice I made uh, till now, I've not seen harvest. Can I have it back? After a long while, suddenly discovered that that guy had increased the amount. Cut the long story short. God, over the years, raised that young man to the point where he was giving $80,000 monthly. $80,000. He said he was one of the first few people to give him the first 1M. One of the first few people to give him the first one earth. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Sacrifice can be also that you have a skill, you have a qualification that can make you XYZ amount of money somewhere. But then you choose to sacrifice that X, Y, Z amount and probably make just 20% of it serving God in the church. Yeah. Say maybe the church needs a particular area of skill and gift and you are qualified. You know you can do it well. And so you have a choice. I'm earning X, Y, Z amount of money. But what the church is going to pay me is like 20% of it. I would love to, but it's just that I have needs. So sacrifice for you can be, you know what? I'll forfeit that. And Lord, I'm going to use my gift to serve you and to serve your kingdom. That is sacrifice. And you do it with joy. Not doing it like these people don't know what I'm giving them. You see, some people spoil their seeds with their attitude. You, you, are, you are giving something quality, but your attitude is making it unacceptable offering. Because not all offerings are acceptable to God. And when I'm talking about offering, again, in a broad spectrum, it's not just money. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the secret of greatness. The secret of standing out in life. The secret of attracting supernatural forces that can propel you from where you are to where others dream. They can only see it in their dream but can't get there. Can't get there. Abraham offered his son. No, he didn't offer money. It was his son. Which one is easier? Money is easier. If God told Abraham to empty his account, it's, I mean, more, very easy. Offered his son. It's like God said, Pastor Lola. Ha. <laughs> She will wrestle with God, though. She huh. huh. doesn't joke with time. <laughs> if she had ten houses, 
She can bargain with you. Say, God, which one do you want? Or do you want all of them? Take all of them. But this area you are going to, you know, we have never had issues since I gave my life to you. It's easier to offer money, material thing. And then God says to Abraham, take your... Ah! Oh my God. That was a test of greatness. That was a test of greatness. God wanted to see if he could handle the greatness that was coming. And some have been tested severally and they failed it. You prayed for greatness. You prayed, God, lift me. And then the test came. You flunked it and you are still praying. There are some things prayer can change. The sacrifice. What you lay on the altar. And go and search anywhere. There is no altar without sacrifice. Altar is nothing. It's just ordinary. It's nothing. What makes altar meaningful is sacrifice. Isaac even asked, Dad, I can see the wood and all that. Where is the lamb? Where is the what are you going to sacrifice? It would have been too heavy for Abraham to say you are the sacrifice. He just told him, Jehovah Jireh, God will provide himself. And then he ties him. Probably refuses to look at his eyes. But that would be painful. To look in his eyes. Just ties him and looks up. Because assassins, when they are just starting out, I tell them, don't look at the eyes of your victim. It's only when they have graduated, when they have become cold-blooded. They look at the eyes of the victim. The humanity will prick you. The humanity will prick you, will weaken that individual. So I'm sure Abraham couldn't have looked at the eyes of his son Isaac. That looked up. And then on his way down to cut his throat. Abraham, Abraham called him twice. Because the force with which Abraham was going. He needed to hear God twice. To stop. As far as he was concerned, he had already done it. He said, now I know. Wow. Now I know. It's not um, what you said. Based on what you have done now, I can tell. If you can't use anything, Lord, you can use me. But, but that's words. That's words. The action. The action. And so God now told him, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. I'll make your descendant like the sun on the seashore. You can't number them. It wasn't because God just liked Abraham. No. <laughs> Abraham got it by sacrifice. As a father of faith. You see, let me tell you, incomplete gospel can be dangerous. And it has, it has damaged a lot of people because they're wrong with a message that is not complete, expecting result, 
one year, two years, they don't see results. They become disillusioned. I begin to doubt the word of God. Begin to doubt the word of God. Abraham, the father of faith. So faith is not just confess and believe and possess. No. It's just a fraction of it. Faith is also your willingness to lay down, to live a lifestyle of laying down something that is of worth. Lay down for God. Lay down your time. Lay down your talent. Lay down your gifts. Lay down. You know that your skill, your gift is, is required in church and can be used to advance the cause of Christ. But um, you are unwilling to lay it down because, in quotes, your time is very important to you. You see, be careful how you claim what God has given. My time, my talent. Ah. It's dangerous. It's a dangerous way of talking. So that God is not provoked to show you that it's not yours, it's his. You are just a steward. A steward is somebody who is giving something to hold on behalf of someone else. You might use it, but you are going to give account. That's why the Bible says you are going to give account to God. That tells you that we are not owners, we are stewards. If we are going to give account, you are steward of the time you have. You are steward of your gifts. You are steward of whatever it is you currently possess. You are stewards. Steward. Sacrifice is being around for prayer when you could have been watching whatever else and you are consistent. It's not like you are around for prayer because you don't have anything doing. No, 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 no. No. You are around for prayer in spite of what you have doing. You are around for vigil in spite of the fact that your bed is calling. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. You want ten times more, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know this, if you don't understand this subject, and you are naming and claiming ten times more, I will not be doing you um, a good service as a steward of the word of God. I won't be. Ten times more requires <laughs> ten times more. That's the best way to put it. That's the best way to put it. That's the best way to put it. Ten times more requires ten times more. So, so the eyes of the Lord is running to and fro to show himself strong. The, I can give you many, you know, I, I've not even gone there. Many examples that I know of. Many examples. There was a guy when I was in my, my church, he used to play for the church. He was the second keyboardist. He had no home, so he used to sleep in the church office. And he wasn't being paid. But he was playing full time. So he was even more available than the main keyboardist who was being paid.
and he did that for years. And very disciplined guy. Didn't have too many friends. Very focused, young guy. Focused on what he was doing for God. Improving himself daily. And then one day, he put out something online. One major musician in America heard it. How the person heard it, of course, is supernatural. Cut the long story short. Let me cut the long story short. That's how he found himself in America. And from that one person, the guy has produced for people like Beyonce. Yeah. And still very actively serving God. So you can imagine to say that he's, he's very rich is an understatement. He has worked with several of the A-list artists. A-list, several. Several of them. All those sacrifices paid off. All those sacrifices paid off. So he, then when he was serving, he wasn't the kind of person you could you could um, um, you could make suggestions to. That is suggestion as in, ah, how can they be using you like this? You, you couldn't, you know, there are people you just know that you don't, don't bring your nonsense to them. Don't bring your evil counsel to them. It was that kind of person. And there are people that you know that this one is just waiting for somebody to say something and <laughs> she would just flow and begin to, you know, <laughs> Talk like parrots. <laughs> ah, man, ah, how this shot knows what's, what, what, what they have, just having someone like you. He's well. God sees. I hope they know. God sees. Sometimes I get discouraged, but he's well. You know, man is man. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus Christ. No, he wasn't that kind of fellow. He wasn't that kind of fellow. And he did that for years. Did that for years. Was it that he was the most competent from Nigeria? No. He wasn't. He wasn't even as good as the main keyboard. But you see, sacrifice deploys supernatural forces to work for you. And those supernatural forces are the ones that will make mention of you in high places.